Okay, in this video we are going to uh, introduce the six trigonometric functions and we are going to start evaluating those at specific angles. So what we want to think about is we want to think about um, the unit circle and the terminal points around the outside of the unit circle uh, at specific angles. So what I mean by that is if I were to say, hey, let's think about the angle pi over 6 radians or 30 degrees, right? That's the, that, those are equivalent angles. The coordinate point at the terminal co uh, coordinate point at that angle on the unit circle is the square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So I'm referencing these coordinate points along the outside of this circle. Um, and this is how we're going to define trig functions uh, at those specific angles. So if I wanted to find the cosine, COS, of some angle T, Okay, so we're saying let t be any real number, but we want to think about t as being the angle um, on the unit circle. If I want to do the cosine of t, that is simply equal to the x-coordinate of the terminal point at that angle. The sine, S-I-N, of the angle t is equal to the y-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. The tangent of the angle T is equal to the Y coordinate divided by the X coordinate. Okay, so those are your three main trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. And those are simply just the X, the Y, and then the quotient of the Y and the X coordinates at those points. The other three trig functions that we have are what we call the secant SEC, the secant of the angle T, is the reciprocal of the x coordinate. So we can think of that as 1 over the x coordinate. Or if we have a fraction, right, most of those uh, coordinate points are fractions. That just means to flip your fraction. Okay, so we have the secant. We have the cosecant, which is CSC. The cosecant of the angle T is the reciprocal of the y coordinate. And the cotangent, C-O-T, the cotangent of the angle T is equal to the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate, which means it's the reciprocal of what you had for tangent. Okay, so that's how we define the, the six trig functions at real numbers, or uh, again, thinking specifically at the angles that we have on our unit circle. That's how we're going to define those. Okay, so um, this diagram off to the right kind of helps you with which trig functions are positive in which quadrants. Okay, so what this basically is saying is that if you're in quadrant one, every single one of those six trig functions will return a positive value. If you are in quadrant two, um, sine and cosecant will return positive values, and the other four will all return negative values there. In quadrant three, tangent and cotangent will give you positive values. Everything else will be negative. And in quadrant four, cosine and secant will return positive values and everything else will be negative. Now, the way I think about this is uh, if you just remember that cosine is x and sine is y, I mean, it should make sense that sine is positive in quadrant two because y coordinates are positive, right, in quadrant one and quadrant two, right? So if I know sine is y, then that means all my positive values for sine are going to be in quadrants one and two and all my negative uh, values for sine are going to be in quadrants 3 and 4. Likewise with cosine, since cosine is the x-coordinate, cosine is going to be positive when we're on the right. right? Positive x values happen in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So I know that cosine is going to always be positive over here to the right and always be negative over here to the left. And then maybe the trickier one would be the tangent and the cotangent, and that is um, those are going to be positive whenever the quotient y divided by x is positive. So if you think about that, again, positive in quadrant 1 because everything is positive there. But it's going to also be positive in quadrant 3 because x and y are both negative in quadrant 3. So if I divide those, that's going to give me a positive value here. Okay. Um, and then the way I, if I just remember which ones are reciprocal, so like cosecant is reciprocal of sine, so the, the S-I-G-N sine of cosecant, um, will work the same way as the S-I-G-N sine of sine um, because we're just doing reciprocal. And then secant will work the same as cosine and cotangent will work the same as tangent. So 
this diagram helps to remember that. Um, but again, I just think about cosine is x, sine is y, and I think about how x and y coordinates work, and that typically helps with determining where things are positive and where they will be negative. So um, here we've got a question that says the cosine of the angle t is less than 0 or negative, and the sine of the angle t is positive. Um, in which quadrant is our angle t in? Okay, so anytime you're given a situation like this, each one of these will, you'll be able to narrow it down to two possible quadrants. So if I know that the cosine of the angle t is negative, cosine is x, where is cosine ne or where is x negative? That could be in quadrant two or quadrant three, right? X coordinates are negative when we go to the left. And then it tells us the sine is positive. So sine is the y-coordinate. Where are y-coordinates positive? That could happen in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Which means that the angle has to be in quadrant 2 because that is where those two things meet up. Number 2, the tangent of the angle T is positive. So that could happen in quadrant 1 and that can happen in quadrant 3. The secant is negative. So secant is reciprocal of cosine. So secant works the same way as cosine. So think about x. Whereas x negative, x is negative in quadrants 2 and 3, which means that this angle t in this case has to be in quadrant 3. Okay, um, evaluating trig functions. So we're going to be able to do this without a calculator. Um, because we have a unit circle, and it's going to be really quick. We're, go we're going to always get kind of the same answers over and over again. It's just we're going to have to be um, worried about if things are positive or if they're negative, depending on which quadrant we're in. Um, every angle that you see listed is a special angle on the unit circle here. And what we're doing is evaluating trig functions at those angles. So for number one, we're going to do the cosine of 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to look at the, the unit circle, and we're talking about the angle 2 pi over 3 here. And I want to know what the cosine of that is. So the way that you're using the unit circle here is you're saying, okay, I know the cosine is the x-coordinate of the, of the terminal point there. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half. It's the x-coordinate at that terminal point. Um, I'm going to skip tangent for now. I'm going to go ahead and do number 3. The sine of 2 pi. Well, 2 pi is over here. Sine is the y-coordinate, which means the answer here is 0. Number 4, the sine of 5 pi over 4. Here's 5 pi over 4. Sine is the y-coordinate, negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3. Over here, cosine is the x-coordinate, negative 1 half. Again, I'm going to skip tangent for right now. Cosine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is at the top. Cosine is the x-coordinate. That is 0. And sine of 7 pi over 6. Here's 7 pi over 6. Sine is the y-coordinate, so that's going to be negative 1 half. Okay, so if you have the unit circle memorized, it's really kind of easy uh, with sine and cosine because I just have to think about, well, where's the point? What's the coordinate point there? Am I doing cosine or sine? That's going to determine if I do x or y. We've got a little bit of work involved here whenever we do tangent, because tangent is y over x. So for pi over 3, here's pi over 3. If I want to do the tangent of pi over 3, I need to take the y-coordinate and divide by the x-coordinate, which means we're going to have the uh, square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. And then I would just simplify this. Now, a shortcut for dividing fractions is if the fractions have the same denominator. Our answer is just going to be the fraction of the numerators, which means we're going to get the square root of 3 divided by 1, which means we're going to get the square root of 3. Tangent of pi. Okay, so where's pi? That's over here. Tangent is y divided by x, so that's going to be 0 divided by negative 1, which means we're going to get 0. So you got a little bit of work involved um, for the other trig functions, but sine and cosine should be pretty easy. And most of the work is just some basic fraction work. It shouldn't be too challenging to work through that.
Okay, now the next three questions, um, they're asking us to evaluate trig functions of angles that are not on the unit circle. All right, 2.2. I don't see 2.2 as, as an angle measurement anywhere on here. Now the question becomes, okay, so how do I know if this is talking about radians, 2.2 radians, or if this is talking about degrees, 2.2 degrees? And the quick answer for that is, if there is no degree symbol, this is referencing radians. Okay, so this is asking me for the sine of 2.2 radians. Now again, I don't know where 2.2 radians is located. I don't have that as one of my special radian measurements. Right? None of those say 2.2. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to use a calculator for this. If this is not a, a unit circle measurement, or if I can't map it to a unit circle measurement, which is in a later video, um, then what we're going to do is use a calculator to evaluate. Um, so I do want to show you this in Desmos. We do want to make sure that we are in what's called radian mode. So when we go to do a calculation, before I do that, I'm going to click the wrench to the top right. I want to make sure that radians is selected here instead of degrees. Now if I'm trying to do the sine of 2.2 degrees, I would want to make sure that I'm in degree mode. But we're going to do 2.2 radians, and then I'm simply just going to do the sine of 2.2, and that will give me a value here. So the sine of 2.2 is 0 0.808. Okay, so we could fill that in here, 0 0.808. I do want to show you that if I change this to radian, or sorry, to degree mode, notice how my answer changed. So it's going to be really important that you're in the correct mode. You'll get completely different answers here. Next one is cotangent of 28. So I'm just going to type that in, cotangent of 28, negative 3.55. So we can fill that in here, negative 3.55. And then the cosine of 1.1, cosine of 1.1, 0 0.45. Okay, so we've got those answers. And again, those are just, you know, if you, if you don't get answers that aren't represented as coordinate points, then that means your angle wasn't a nice angle, right? If I tried doing like the cosine of uh, pi over 3, the calculator should tell me 0.5 because the answer is one half. Um, these gave me ugly numbers, which means these angles were not good angles. Okay, so most of the values that you're going to be given are going to be unit circle angles so that you can answer those more quickly and not have to use a calculator to do so. Okay, so that's just a quick introduction to our six trig functions and how to evaluate them uh, around the unit circle.